Oh, I do apologize. Am I disturbing you? No, please. Do come in, Mrs. My name is Miss Alice de Bouvier. I'm Mr. Holmes' new neighbor. Oh, I didn't have the pleasure to... Uh, I am Dr. John Watson. Could we provide you with any assistance? Oh, uh, she is not the concern, Watson. I'm... <laughs> then, what is this about? Oh, uh, that child standing sniffling behind her. Get rid of him, Watson. But he is shivering with cold. And he is upset. What happened to him? Little Tom knocked at the wrong door. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, boy, come in. Warm yourself by the fire. Can I offer you a cup of tea, Miss de Bouvier? Well, I... It is not as though we are disturbing you-know-who, are we? I suppose not. Since you are our new neighbor, it is perhaps better that you know what he's like. You're starting to worry me. Well, Mr. Holmes is relapsing. This illness that he has seizes him when he finds himself with nothing to do. He becomes completely asocial. And alas, this is a very difficult, medically incurable case. Now this must stay between us. Of course, I understand. How very sad. But there is a cure, if only a temporary one. A thrilling inquiry. Most certainly. If he refuses this one, then his condition will worsen. Oh, I am still here, you know. I didn't fall out of the window. Very well, then. Thank you, miss. Hello, and welcome to Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. This is the first case, and it is called Pray Tell. And it is an original story written for this game. The Devil's Daughter is pretty much a direct continuation of crimes and punishments. But for some reason they have decided to make Holmes and Watson look 10 years younger. For whatever reason, I have no idea. Mechanics in this game are pretty much the same as crimes and punishments. There are going to be certain differences. We have the option still to question individuals and with some characters you can make a portrait of them. The main difference between this and crimes and punishments is this. Some of the options that we can find have a choice. Now this one is pretty easy to start off with. I mean the boy is clearly upset. Now, Crimes and Punishments, I believe, was set between 1894 and 1895. So this would put The Devil's Daughter in 1895, possibly 1896. But considering it's a direct, well, almost a direct continuation, we're pro probably looking at the end of 1895. You may remember the previous game ended with the lines about a new neighbour moving in, who happens to be a lady. You just met that lady. So the idea of this is to create a profile of a character so when we question them further we can possibly counteract anything they have to tell us. You'll see momentarily. The hand doesn't really look that injured. Well, I think you'd be able to tell if there was some kind of injury to it, so it must be a malformation of some sort. With the previous games, I will restate that I will keep up any new information on screen for several seconds. Feel free to pause if you want to spend more time reading them. I say this with every game as I'm sure there will, will be people going straight into this game and who haven't watched previous videos of the previous games. The profiling helps because it means we can question these people further. 
Now tell me, boy, what brings you here? It's... it's my father, sir. He's missing. I... I don't know what to do. What's his name? George Hurst, sir. Missing, eh? And what do the police say? The police? They don't believe me. They say he's just abandoned me. But that's a lie! So the QTE events have returned, and as I said before, profiling people means that we can question people further, or counteract a lie. But obviously this boy is being quite truthful with us. The police say they have, well his parents have abandoned him, but because of his patched up waistcoat, he does have caring parents. Oh yes, and also, it seems like he has the ability to read. Obviously. Your clothes are well mended and you can read. Your parents may be poor, but you are loved. Yeah, well, it's just the two of us now. My mother died when I was a little one. And that's just one more reason for not leaving you. Your father doesn't seem the irresponsible type. He's very good to you. Well, that's right. But he has no fixed work, so he often takes odd jobs for the day. Because that's all he can find. Only this time, he didn't come home. And when was the last time you saw him? Three weeks ago. He left for a new job. But this time, he was acting a bit strange and angry. Strange? In what way? He said to me, Son, I'm out on a special job. Don't you dare move from here. I think something went wrong. Three weeks? That's a long time. Well, every day I thought he would show up. And anyway, I can look after myself. As much as he believes that, he is only eight years old. What were you thinking? You and your father are both at risk. You should have come to me much earlier. I was afraid. I ain't got no family, and I've got no other place to go. If our landlord finds out that father left me, he'll throw me out on the street. Tom, you've been very resourceful. We shall be discreet. If only my mother was still here. Very well. Your address, please, Tom. 12 Dorset Street, the first floor, door E. It's in Whitechapel, sir. I ain't got no money to pay. Who asked for money, Tom? Your case seems to be the very medicine I need. I'll meet you there shortly. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, before we go to Dorset Street, let's explore the apartment and Baker Street. My analysis table. It's useful for my work. Poor child. Holmes, you should help him. Watson is hogging the telescope, but I remember what we saw in the telescope in the last game. Oh, hello, Toby. Brave Toby, the best nose in the British Empire. Now, when I go to explore Baker Streets, I'm going to have a little bit of a talk. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. The archive seems to be, even though there's three options, they seem to be combined into one in this game. Holmes's room seems to be a little bit more fancier. And we also have an open balcony. The maps in this game, well I've only seen two maps so far, but they are huge. But one thing I like about them is that the developers have made a lot of efforts into breathing some life into them. They're quite vibrant. And they don't seem to be dead-eyed NPCs just walking around. So the wardrobe and the makeup table has returned, but this time, everything is unlocked. I'll stick to the festive attire for the moment. There is some slight variance with the makeup table. I'm sure we will explore this fully later. And right now I can make Holmes walk around looking like whatever I want to. But let's keep him for the original for the moment. Oh, 
Now Watson's room has definitely had some improvements as in some of the earlier games this was very Spartan. Watson documents our adventures in here. We're not going to see anything of the plots from this point on. Well, just exploring the apartments isn't anything to do with the plots. So, Baker Street is quite large. And there are some things we can do. But be warned, there is going to be quite a bit of jank in this game. And when I say they have brought some life into this game, it's not just in this area. Before I begin my walk, let's just pick up a newspaper. In the previous game, the loading screens were very unique, as every time we moved into a new area, we were put into a hansom, which meant that as the, the, the areas were loading, we could access this casebook, which meant I could look at these while things were loading to save a bit of time. But unfortunately, I don't have that luxury in this game, it's just a straight loading screen. So every now and again I will be bringing up this case book so we can review some of the evidence that we've collected. The case book also contains doc any documents that we find. It also contains a record of any dialogue that we have had. The echoes are correspondence that we, we will receive at the end of each case and the character portraits of certain individuals are kept in here as well. We can use this mini-map at any time for fast travel and we also have this task list just here which is quite handy. So let's have a walk around Baker Street. Firstly there is going to be some jank in this game like I said. The maps are huge and the loading was it the progressional loading of the areas is going to make things a little bit tough to explore. And unfortunately this is not an uncommon problem as there has been a lot of complaints about this. I mean unless you have a really powerful system I don't think you can really circumvent it. And even though I have a system that matches well is is a bit more than the recommended settings. I still receive some jerkiness even on the lowest settings and lowest resolutions, so I'm going to have to take it easy when I walk around while the areas load up a little bit. Oh, it seems like Danny has moved and has taken up horse riding. And I have mentioned in the threads on the Something Awful forums that I was in two minds about playing this game because of... I was very concerned about the quality of recording. Are you okay there, sir? I don't want to go with you, fuck everybody! Okay. The first thing that put me off was the opening video. And... I thought, if the video is going to be that quality, then there's no way I can actually let's play this game. And I basically ruled out doing this game because of the intro video. Until I delved a bit further and discovered that the opening video is a raw video file. London street food. There are less painful ways to die. Yeah, the game shipped with a very low quality and very jerky opening intro video. But after I discovered that it was a raw video file, I decided to test the game out itself. And anyway, the reason why I'm sticking around this little machine here is that this is a throwback to the testament of Sherlock Holmes. There are a few easter eggs to previous games here. And around Baker Street we are able to practice some mini games. Like the darts here. And it seems like we have a little bit of a jerky crosshair. Just to make life a little bit more difficult. Ah, 
there, not too bad. Well, it's 180 from five darts rather than three. One thing I don't like about part of this is that when we exit this mini game, it brings up this menu screen here, which slightly ruins the immersion, but it's not a big thing. Anyway, back to the quality of the game. It's unfortunate I'm going to have some issues with the progression loading of the areas. Uh, excuse me, sir, what are you doing? I hope that's your luggage. So, I'm going to try and take it as easy as I can walking around. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Dysentery. Watson was kind enough to give me an incredibly tedious lecture on the subject. But the issue with the jerkiness with the areas loading was one thing that did kind of put me off, but I figured it was going to happen anyway. Watson's favourite tea cakes. I'll do my best to make it as least painful as possible. Now this is a throwback to the previous game, Crimes and Punishments. There was a list in Kew Gardens about all the plants that were on display. But it's more easily read here. I believe there's another mini game right around this corner. One with that we, one that we saw in the previous game. There are five mini games that we can practice in this area, which is quite handy. Now we can also access the fast travel system by clicking on these Hansons directly. Which I guess kind of helps make it a bit more realistic, but unfortunately when we have just straight loading screens instead of the traditional tradi transitions that we had in the previous game, it's just ruin it slightly. Scotland Yard. Hmm. I hope I won't need them. I've already exceeded my imbecile quota for the day. I'm sure that we will, we will, but we will be back here at some point soon. Yeah, for an adventure game, these maps are massive. I think they're on, well, personally, I think they're on RPG kind of levels. But, as I said before, they have been very well populated and there has been a lot of attention to detail put into them. Aha, here is the third mini game. Right next to these. Policeman, I hope you're on a break. Dancing elephant. Strange, but it somehow makes me think of Micro. Again, this one is from Crimes and Punishments, as well as this mini game. I think you all are, really. Mm-hmm. 
I struggled with the arm wrestling at first, but as soon as you know the mechanics, it's very, very easy. I don't think there is much done that way apart from another route back to the main street. Now I believe that we've come full, full circle around as we went down that road just here. I'm not going to fully explore the Baker Streets. Oh. Hi there, you okay? The last mini game is just down the end here. This is our apartment door. Well, the door, the door that leads to our, our, our apartment door. There is more rows down that way, but there isn't much to see down that way. This is the last mini game. This is the mini map again. Okay, let's just have a quick wander down here. Excuse me, sir, but have you lost something? Ah, yes, this is our balcony up here, just there. I think I've seen your brother somewhere close by. What is he doing? Oh well, if it passes the time. Ah, there we go. And that is Baker Street. So... Let's go and do our job. 